Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build the Wyvern Flying Wing. The wire, Wyvern Flying Wing is just what it seems, a 36 inch version of the Chimera, but that's where the similarities end. The Wyvern is extremely fast and extremely aggressive. This is not a beginner's plane. However, if you're looking for a small plane with long flight times that can easily exceed speeds of 100 miles an hour or more, this is your plane. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it. A few things about this airplane before you start building. The center of gravity on this airplane is 7 and 1 fourth inches from the nose. Also, I highly recommend using the included spars and glue them in how I'm showing you. The spars do seem flimsy at first, but when you put the airplane together, you're going to find it's very, 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 very stiff. And you'll not need any more spars to make this thing go faster. Another thing to note is that the winglets are indeed optional. Most pilots will find that the center stabilizers alone will fly the best. The winglets allow the plane to have a very locked in rock solid feel and they also allow it to glide further. However, it might incur some tail wag issues, especially in higher winds. Where the center stabilizers, when run alone, will give the plane a smoother performance in the wind, but won't necessarily give it that rock solid locked in feel, and it might not glide quite as far. Again, the choice is up to you whether you put the winglets on or whether you leave them off. Either way, when you open the throttle all the way up, it really doesn't matter whether they're there or not because this plane is going to rock. We'll start this build by gluing the wing section together. Add a heavy amount of glue to the center section of the wing making sure there's adequate glue to coat both it and the surface it will mate to. Then press the two surfaces together, work them around, and pull them apart and let them dry. Repeat this with the other side. Once done, do this exact same process with the wing tips. Coat the wing tips in a heavy coating of glue. Work them around, then pull them off and let them dry. It takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes for this glue to dry till it's aggressively tacky. Then simply press them together and the plane will bond up. With the wing sections dry, press them together. Start with the tip and then work your way to the back being sure everything lines up as it should. Then press together firmly. Repeat this with the other side, starting with the mid wings. Be sure everything lines up before pressing in. Then do this with the wing tips as well. You'll want the beveled side to be down. That is, the slightly shorter section should be towards the ground. The next step is to cut and install your spars. Cut one of the spars in half, that is, 24 inches long. Then lay it across the wing and trace a line all the way down. You want this to be about one and a half inches behind the leading edge, the tips. Take a marker, trace it across, then take a knife and a straight edge and cut about one eighth to three sixteenths of an inch deep into the foam. Once cut, inject a heavy amount of glue in that slot and then embed your spar. You will repeat this exact same process on the back side of the wing. Try to do your best to be sure that both the spar on the top and the bottom line up properly. Next, cut your remaining two spars, both as a pair. Cut twice at 11 inches and then once at 13 inches. This will give you eight spars, four 11 inch spars and four 13 inch spars. The 11 inch spars are placed in the front of the wing, as I'm showing here. Again, Cut only at 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch deep into the foam. 
Then embed a heavy amount of glue. And finally, install your spar in place. Repeat this for both the other side as well as the bottom of the wing. You'll have four spars total coming to the front of the wing when done. The 13 inch spars go in the back of the plane to strengthen the wing tips. I'm installing these approximately one inch from my nearest elevon joint. You can move them up a little bit more to up approximately two inches, but as long as they're back here, the exact location is irrelevant. Again, we're only going to cut about one eighth to three sixteenths of an inch deep into the foam, then embed a heavy amount of glue, and as always, embed our spar. We will repeat this process for both sides of the wing, as well as both sides on the bottom. I am adding some additional stress sparring to the back of the wing to help reinforce the motor in the event of a crash or just in case I decide to put an even more powerful motor on this airplane. This is the weakest part of the airplane so I highly recommend adding a little bit of sparring. You don't need to do top and bottom, just top or bottom will do fine. I'm using the motor mount as a template and placing the spars just on the inside of the bolts which mount the motor. Again, I'm using a heavy amount of glue in each slice I'm cutting, and then I'm embedding a small spar into each section. I highly recommend laminating the swing. This not only increases the durability, but it will also increase the speed the plane will achieve. Start from the outer edges of the wing and work your way back and towards the center. I'm starting with the bottom, but you can start with the top. It really doesn't matter. Once you have it pretty well ironed on, use a knife to cut out slots at each of the sharp bend angles. Then flip the aircraft over and fold these sections over onto the other side of the aircraft, trying to overlap the laminate over top of itself. This will make for a nice solid bond between the laminate and make sure it doesn't come loose with repeated crashes. I highly suggest you let the plane fully cure overnight or at least eight hours before starting the laminating process. However, it isn't entirely necessary since for some reason this glue appears to dry even when covered in laminate. It just takes longer. To install the motor mount, start by placing it on top of the airframe, then use the threaded rod to poke down through the holes in the motor mount to go down through the foam. This will create a path that the bolts will fit easily through. The, the motor mount is actually mounted to the bottom of the airframe with a triangular reinforcing block over the top. You'll want to tighten the bolts not excessively tight. Snug with a little bit of Loctite works great. However, be sure that the Loctite is fully dried before installing the bolts as Loctite will indeed damage the motor mount. Use the battery as a template to know where your securing rails will go. I'm using a pen just to mark where I want my rails to go. Then I'll take a knife, cut down the foam, also cutting part way down into the battery bay, and then into the foam on the other side. These get installed with the shallower side, that is the side nearest the holes, down. They will embed down into the battery tray. Use a heavy amount of glue into the slots which you've cut, and then embed your battery rails. These holes in the bottom of the battery rails should line up with the base of the battery bay floor. These allow wires to get passed through easily without interfering with the airflow of the airplane. I recommend securing your elevons with a little bit of laminate, but clear packaging tape seems to work fairly well too. You want to pull your elevon tight to the airframe so it won't wiggle around at high speeds. Then laminate over the top. Once secured, flip it over and flip the elevon up, then laminate or tape the bottom side. 
You'll also want to adhere to the beveled edge of the back of the wing. This will create a nice solid hinge that won't wiggle around, especially when flying at high speed. Install the servo horn in the middle of the Elevon. You can use the servo horn itself as a template to press the screws straight through if you like. Push the screws straight through and then use the square securing plate on the back to secure it in place. The servo should be installed on the inside of the control horn. Use the servo as a template, then trace around it with a knife or with a pen. I'm going to use a pen because it makes it a little bit easier. Then cut out the section that you marked out just to the inside. You'll want the foam to hug the servo very, very tightly so it won't move around. You can feel free to cut all the way through the wing as the wing is likely just barely thicker than the servo is itself. In my case, I'm going to use my servo foam hogging tool to make it out. This was made from a simple piece of TIG welding wire attached to a soldering gun. Then simply apply a little bit of glue to the servo and drop in the hole you made. Control rods are made from a clevis on either end of a threaded rod. Thread one end of the threaded rod into the clevis at least three turns. Then using the other clevis as a guide, cut off the threaded rod so that you can get at least three turns on the clevis to create your control horn. Ideally, eight turns on each side would be used. You'll want about 1 8th to 1 16th of an inch of reflex in each of the elevons to give the airplane enough up elevator to fly straight. I tend to like to bury my servo wires into the wing as it doesn't make it any weaker, but definitely gives it a lower profile. Just use a knife and slice into the foam at the approximate depth needed to fully embed the wire. I'm opening the channel up a little bit more with a screwdriver and then of course with my hot wire tool, but this is not entirely necessary. Embed the wire down into the slot you made, and then, if necessary, pass through the holes in the battery rails to get it over to where your receiver is located. The stabilizers get installed at the joint between the mid-wing and the wing tip. Simply slide it over the foam, then deflect it out of the way and embed a little bit of glue at the seam where this overcomes the wing. Do this for both the top and the bottom. You'll need to let this dry at least eight hours. I'm using a simple Velcro strap to, to secure my battery in place. Take a knife and cut down either side of the battery rails as close to them as possible. Then take a Velcro strap or some similar strap and press it down through the foam and out the back side. Then repeat this down through the other side. I find it's easiest to fold it around a flathead screwdriver when forcing it down through the foam. When done, you'll have a very secure battery strap. This is a close-up of what my battery bay and the electronics look like. As you can see, I've got my receiver on one side and then my FPV electronics on the other. In this photo, you can see the speed control is up on the back of the aircraft. However, I found that I needed more nose weight <clears throat> and thus I had to move the ESC down into the slot to the right hand side. As you can see in this photo, my battery fits quite securely. Now to install the camera. I placed the camera on a panning servo and then simply wired it down into the system. Not only did I need a little bit of extra nose weight, but I always like to be able to pan the camera side to side, especially when I'm trying to shoot gaps. It helps me line the aircraft up. This is what it looks like from the other side. Excuse the mess as I haven't cleaned up all the wiring in this photo yet, but you can see where I dropped the speed control down into the battery bay on the other side rather than up top. And now you're all ready for flight. Go out and enjoy. Your center of gravity should be between seven and seven and one fourth inches from the nose. This plane requires a fairly large battery to get it to balance if you used a very large motor like I did. Fly and enjoy.